In the previous part, we have studied adaptations of organisms in relation to external factors like soil. During this lecture, we will discuss adaptations of organisms in relation to light factor as cave dwellers, deep sea adaptations, volant adaptations in relation to external factor air and fire adaptations. The idea of adaptation maintains that organisms are structurally and functionally designed for meeting the needs of life in the habitats in which they live. Thus, adaptations include adjustments by which an organism accommodates itself to its environment. For this lecture, let us start with different adaptations in detail. Let us focus on adaptations of organisms in relation to light factor as cave dwellers. Absence of sunlight and uniformity in temperature are the two striking physical characteristic existing in caves. The caves may be divided into the different zones depending on variable physical conditions as twilight zone. This zone comprises of the mouth of the cave and a little amount of light may penetrate. This zone constitutes the transitional region of the cave. Fluctuating temperature zone. Seasonal or diurnal variation of temperature is felt in this zone. Inner cave region. In this zone, light is absent and the temperature remains more or less constant. The structural modifications of the cave dwellers are mainly due to lack of light, scarcity of food and changelessness physical conditions. The adaptations in permanent cave animals are quite striking. The principal modifications include bleaching of pigmentations of skin, reduction of eyes and development of highly sensitive tactile organs. The scarcity of food has modified the organs of digestion. As a result, the body becomes slender with delicate appendages. Many fishes inhabit the caves and show structural modifications. Majority of the cave fishes show sign of degeneration of eyes. The catfish is almost blind. In small cave fish called the Tiphylictus subterraneus, the eyes are present in young stage but become useless in adult. In peculiar cave amphibian named as Proteus angunus, the body is white and it lives in complete darkness. It can exist for a long time without food. It is completely blind but the body is experimentally seen to be very sensitive. As already discussed, the environment in caves is non-fluctuating and is more or less uniform. This changelessness has made all the cave dwellers to look alike. Absence of life and lack of food have made the cave dwellers weak and degenerated forms. Let us quickly get the idea of deep sea adaptations for external factor light. Matthew has given introduction to deep sea adaptations. Physical characteristics of deep sea area include prevalence of five remarkable conditions. Absence of sunlight. The limit of penetration of sun's rays is about 200 fathoms. Beyond that depth there is no sunlight. Quiescence. Because of depth the movement of water is almost absent and the movement is exceedingly slow. Cold temperature. Beyond a certain depth, the temperature is nearing to freezing point and the temperature remains constant. Diurnal and seasonal fluctuations of temperature cease. Pressure. The pressure of the water column is enormous and increases with the depth. Lack of green vegetation. Besides the above factors, another factor is the total absence of green vegetation due to absence of sunlight. For leading deep sea life, 
the animals exhibit certain structural variations. The general trends of adaptation in deep sea animals include the deep sea animals are weak and delicate. The hue of body is generally simplified. The deep sea forms are either with powerful telescoping eyes to catch maximum possible volume of light rays or are totally blind. They show development of long feelers to act as tactile organs. Almost all the deep sea forms are luminescent. Most of the deep sea fishes live on exudes of decaying matters that have led to the loss of masticatory power. Others are seen to possess powerful jaws. Most of them have wonderful devices for carrying the young and the others produce enormous number of young to overcome the hostile environment. Small sizes is another characteristic of deep sea living. Among the invertebrates, sponges, corals, hydroids, few echinoderms such as brittle stars, tube dwelling annelid worms, cephalopods and some arthropods like the barnacles are some of the deep sea forms and they show quite diverse type of modifications. Amongst the vertebrates of deep sea, the silver sharks show deep sea appearance in having huge eyes and a long attenuated body and tail. The most remarkable group of fishes is the anglers which show typical deep sea characteristic. The paired fins are adapted for crawling on the bottom of the sea. Another species onirodes is blind but has luminous organs to compensate the loss of eyes. Another striking feature is encountered in deep sea fishes. Due to enormous presence of water column, the body is flat, fishes becomes flattened and the mouth is shifted to the lateral side of the body. These structural modifications are observed due to the peculiar physical conditions of the deep sea. The deep sea forms are geologically very recent in origin. These forms were originally the inhabitants of the pelagic or littoral regions which migrated to the deep sea and became adapted there. Due to the changelessness of the physical conditions in deep sea, the evolutionary possibilities are very low. After getting knowledge of organisms adaptations for light factors, now let us study volant adaptations in relation to external factor air. Volant adaptations are concerned with the flight. The flight is a form of locomotion in the air under which the body has to be firstly prevented from falling down and secondly moved forward the speedier the better. Thus, volant adaptations must include modifications in the animal's body for reducing the weight of the body and also for the formation of organs capable of executing the flight. Let us quickly get the idea about two different types of flight and their adaptations. Passive or gliding type flight. This type of movement involves no propulsion other than the initial force of jumping. Gliding is characterized by jumping from a high point and held up by some sustaining organs then to glide to lower level. Thus, there is no locomotive force other than gravity. Here, the wings are made up of folds which do not flap, that is do not move up and down by the muscular action. Various adaptations for gliding include development of patagia. The sustaining surface for the gliding is a fold or series of fold of skin called patagium. The patagium lies between fore limbs and hind limb and can be folded like a fan against the body when it not is in use. The gliding flights are performed by various lizards, for example 
flying dragon fishes for example exocetus birds for example ostrich and mammals like flying phalangers among mammals flying squirrel has highly developed patagium enlargement and high insertion of pectoral fins flying fishes that is exocetus are trim built creatures with large parachute like pectoral fins which are highly inserted on the body exocetus can fly up to 200 to 300 meters to escape from the large fishes webbing of feet in flying frog feet are webbed with sustained prolonged leaps flying frogs digits terminate in adhesive pads which help in adhesion to trees active or true flight it is the aerial flight caused by the action of wings true flight is found in insects pterodactyls birds and bats in all of them the nature of development and structure of wings are quite different and their analogy suggests that the flight has evolved independently in different groups in true flights the power is implied and the movement in air is sustained let us see volant adaptations of birds in detail birds have numerous adaptations for true flight the main adaptations include body contour the streamlined body is spindle shaped or boat shaped and countering least aerial resistance and can easily be passed through the air development of feathers the entire body of bird is invested with a close covering of feathers constituting the plumage the feathers form the exoskeleton of birds feathers are light elastic waterproof and most important in flight presence of wings in birds the four limbs are modified into wings helping in flying the hind limbs or legs are large and variously adapted for walking running scratching perching foot capturing and swimming pneumatization of bones the bones of birds are hollow and air filled they also contain many air cavities these add buoyancy during flight occurrence of flight muscles and keeled sternum in birds specific flight muscles are developed which connect the wings with limb bones each wing possesses specialized muscles called pectoralis major and pectoralis minor the sternum of breast bone is well developed and bears a median keel or carina for attachment of pectoralis muscles development of air sacs they act as air reservoir during respiration and serve as balloons to provide lightness and buoyancy to the body air sacs also help in internal perspiration thus helping in the regulation of body temperature brain and sense organs specificity cerebrum is well developed and optic lobes become enlarged for controlling the great development of sight and olfactory lobes are reduced that is power of smell is reduced birds eyes are large and bear characteristic sclerotic plates to resist variable air pressure eyes also contain pectines which are comb like vascular and pigmented structures to regulate fluid pressure within the eye beak the conversion of four limbs into wings is compensated by the presence of bill or pointed beak the beak is horny and lacks teeth mobile neck neck of bird is very long and flexible single ovary presence of a single functional ovary of the left side in the female bird also leads to reduction of weight 
which is very essential for flight. Absence of urinary bladder. Birds do not have urinary bladder. Further, birds excrete semi-solid excreta which chiefly contain the insoluble uric acid and urates. These features help in reducing the body weight. Now, let us quickly get an overview of the organisms which are possessing fire adaptations. Fire adaptation is the evolution of special traits that enable organisms to survive in extreme conditions of forest fires. To survive in a fire condition, most plants have adaptive traits or abilities that allow them to reproduce or regenerate. In frequent fire prone areas, some plants develop several adaptations like certain trees particularly conifers such as pinus and dicots such as quercus develop fire resistant bark with insulating effect against heat. Ponderosa pine, longleaf pine, slash pine, loblolly pine and giant sequoia are examples of this type of trees. These trees also have tall trunk with the crown restricting to upper zone only. This helps in escaping the destructions against surface and ground fires. In some plants, leaves are fire resistant due to poor contents of compounds such as resin or oil and many check surface fires. Some plants as Pinus rigida and species Eucalyptus have adventitious or latent axillary buds which may develop into new branches. Similarly, Betula papyrifera and Vecinium species may develop new shoots after fire kills the older ones. Apilobium angustifolium acts as a fire indicator species. It grows in patches and remains in dormant condition. In case of fire, these plants rapidly grow while other plants die due to fire. Typically, we can classify plant species into five different categories based on their fire adaptations. Resistors. These are the species that can survive moderate to low intensity fires with little to no damage. Some adaptations of resistors include thick bark to shield them from fire, deep roots protected from fire, the shedding of their lower branches to prevent fire from climbing and moist short needles or leaves that are hard to burn. Some examples include sugar pine and Douglas fir. Sprouters Sprouters are the species that endure fire. Sprouters re-sprout from their roots, trunks, limbs or crown after a burn. Many shrubs are sprouters. Some of these species have hard shield seeds railing on fire to crack them open. Some examples include oak, aspen and madron. Cedars. Cedars are adapted to evade fire by shedding lots of seeds that sprout after fire. Many cedars are dependent on fire to create the habitat needed for their seedlings to sprout and grow in less competitive environment. Some examples include buckbrush and lodgepole pine. Invaders. They take over recently burned areas. Many of the invaders are noxious weeds. Some examples include star thistle and firewood. Avoiders. Avoiders are least adapted to fire. They are not found in recently burned areas. They are typically found near water or in high elevations. Like plants, 
animals display a range of abilities to cope with fire, but they differ from plants in that they must avoid the actual fire to survive. Most animals will either flee the fire or move deeper underground. Wildlife species have developed different methods or strategies to escape fire. Animals such as deer, elk, bear and fox are accomplished runners and use this skill to escape the flames. Birds that have the ability to fly retreat to a safer area until the flames have passed. While some insects populations decline as a result of fire, ants seem to thrive. Ant populations have been recorded as more numerous in burned areas than in unburned areas. Other animals not so adapted for running hide in underground burrows in rock cliffs or other refuge. Rats, mice, moles, shrews, snakes, lizards and turtles burrow to escape fire. Thus, we can say that there are many organisms including plants and animals that possess specific adaptive characteristics which make them fit to survive in extreme situations of the nature. In this part of lecture, the most important external environmental factors to which organisms adapt such as light, air and fire discussed in detail. In terms of light adaptations, we have also got the information about cave dwellers and organisms adapted to deep sea environment. We have also studied various volant adaptations of organisms in relation to external environmental factor air in detail. At last, we have got the brief idea of fire adaptations of plants and animals. Thus, during this lecture, we have seen how different adaptive features of living organisms help them to survive in particular ecological habitats.